In this video, I'm going to go over how Boolean values work in C. So Booleans or bools are values that are either true or false. And many languages actually support some kind of Boolean variable data type by default. C doesn't. If we try to make a bool and we say bool x is equal to true, by default, this is not going to work in C. If I try to compile this, we're going to need an error here. It says use of undeclared identifier bool. So we don't have bools by default. Yet at the same time, we know that C has some notion of true and false because when we have conditions like this and we say if five is greater than four, we know that that condition is going to evaluate to true or false, right? Because if that condition is true, in this case, we've set it up to print F true. Otherwise, if it's false, we've set it up to print F false. And we know that C will treat this as true in this case. And if it's you know four greater than five, we know this is going to be considered false and we know that the conditionals are gonna behave this way. So C does have some notion of true and false. So the way that true and false work in C is that anything that is zero is considered false. Anything that is not zero is considered true. And so what actually happens with four greater than five here is that's actually gonna evaluate to the value zero. So we could actually check that out. We'll say here int result is equal to four greater than five. So we could actually use this relational operator like this. It'd be an unusual way to do, to do this, but we could use it like this. And this is actually gonna evaluate to zero. So we could say printf result percent d slash n, and we'll output it just to see what it's like. We'll say result, and then we'll do a compile over here and run it, and we get result zero. If I change it to five greater than four, and we do a clear here and compile and run it, we get result one. So that's actually the way these sorts of relational operators work in C, is that if this is true, it's gonna evaluate to one. If it's false, it's gonna evaluate to zero. And C is gonna treat anything that is zero as false, and anything that is not zero as true. So if I did this, if I said here, if 45, printf, and we'll say true, else, printf false. What we're going to get is true because 45 is not zero and therefore it evaluates to true. If I said here zero instead and we do a recompile and we run it, we get false because zero is going to evaluate to false. Now this can actually lead to bugs. So if I have something like an assignment operation, what that's actually going to evaluate to is the value that was assigned to the variable. So let's say I have some variable here, int x is equal to zero. And let's say I want a comparison here. I want to do some kind of comparison here, like say, is x equal to two, right? But let's say that I have a bug and I forget to put in the second equals. I only put in one. What actually happens is this is going to evaluate to two. And we're actually going to print out true. So we run this here. And it's giving us some warnings here. It's telling us like, hey, you're doing something here that's clearly wrong. But if I run it, we get true because this evaluates to whatever we're assigning to X here, in this case, two. If I said zero here and we do a recompilation and we run it, I get false because this evaluates to whatever we're assigning here and we get zero. And so this is going to be zero, which is false. So that's something we want to be aware of when we're talking about true and false in C is that false is zero and true is going to be anything that's not zero. Now, what some programmers did over the years as C was a new language is they would define some kind of true and false because they want to use true and false in their program. So they would say, okay, let's define true as one and let's define false as zero. And the idea here is that now you're kind of using these constants in your program and these constants match what C uses for false and what the relational operators will evaluate to for true if the condition being checked is true, if the thing being checked is true. Now, this style you might see out there. That's why I'm mentioning it because there's a lot of old C code out there and you might see this style used. But in the C99 version of the language, a more recent version of the language, they actually included a standard library called stdbool.h. And what stdbool.h gives you is the ability to make Boolean 
variables. So we could say here bool, and I could say x is equal to true. And now I could say here like if x printf true. And we'll say printf true slash n, else printf will say false slash n. And we can just give this a test here. So I'll do a clear here and run it, and I get true. If I say here false, we're going to get false now. Now, what's actually happening is that this is really still an int. Like this is really still an int. So if I did something like this and I said printf, and we'll say x percent d slash n, and I output x, we're going to find that in this case, x is going to be zero. And if I say true here, we're going to find that x is going to be one. So really underneath it all, it's really still just int values that are being used. And we can think of true and false as being, you know, synonyms for one and, and, and zero. And bool here is really underneath it all. Really, it's an int value at the end of the day. But what C does do with this library here is it does sort of enforce true and false to an extent. So if I said something like this, if I said bool x is equal to, let's say, 45 here. What's going to happen is C is actually going to take this value and it's going to force it to be one. It's going to be for, it's going to force it to be one to represent true. So if I actually do a recompilation here and run it, X is forced to be one. I could use zero for false. So I could say zero for false, but if I try to assign anything else at all, so it's, it's false in that case, but if I try to assign anything else at all to X here and, you know, compile and run it here, we're going to find that C forces this thing to evaluate and store as one in X here in the bool that we're trying to store this value to. So C does give you that. And so if you're going to use Boolean values in modern C code, I would include stdbool.h and use that. That's the, that's the kind of right way to do it now. But you might see some old code out there that uses defines that set true and false to be one and zero respectively. So be aware of that as well. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.